Say that again. Something active. Uh, Contemplative. Active. That's different than like aerobics. <laughs> it's contemplative act. Is that like a church elective? <laughs> what does that have to do with uh, salvation? Contemplative spirituality is uh, an ancient Christian practice in the church that has largely been lost, though there are a few people who are trying to recover it. And it's basically a way of being and a way of praying. It's a posture. It's cultivating. Really, it's the practices are about discipline. And I think we've largely lost a lot of our um, discipline in terms of spiritual practices. So what, what do we what do you mean what do we need to spiritually discipline? Yeah. This is about um, teaching our 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 bodies, our minds, our psyche, our will, our emotions to surrender to uh, the will of God in our life. So the disciplines, the prayer, um, particularly a practice that has become known as centering prayer is really helpful in disciplining our soul to be receptive to uh, the, the Spirit of God. So it's like we talk a lot, I think, in Christianity about surrender, about following God, about doing God's will, but oftentimes um, we're, more, well, we're more often inclined to think that we hear the voice of God, but it's really our own voice. <laughs> and uh, it's like the voice of God is somehow distorted by our own filters, and so uh, contemplative prayer really teaches us how to come before God in a, in a more pure way that is like stripped of our normal faculties and normal um, ways of being and our attention toward God. Like it strips us down and teaches us how to be really receptive. Um, the mystics, Christian mystics, say that. Uh, that contemplative spirituality really teaches us to um, surrender and let go, and the practice itself is not a time to be looking for like the fruit of the prayer or to be even trying to hear something from God, but that the fruit of the prayer is really seen in our active life. So it's a time to sort of, like, a, like kind of tending this garden of our soul uh, with the Spirit of God, letting the Spirit of God tend to that, so that in our active life those fruits come out more readily, like the fruit of the Spirit particularly. Yeah, but the thing is we don't like discipline. So it's so, like, centering prayer is so easy. I mean, it's simple. Maybe I should say it's simple, but it's not easy. And it's not easy particularly for the ego because the ego likes to be in control. So it's like so simple, you know, well, what's the big deal? Just sit for 20 minutes in silence. But it's so hard for the ego to sit still and to not be in control. And immediately, you know, the thoughts come and, and it can be just like nerve-wracking to not give in to, oh, this is what i got to do after this prayer time. Um, or, or to ruminate about myself or someone else or a circumstance or situation. And in centering prayer, we, we just discipline the mind to just let go, be at rest. Really, it was the first kind of prayer practice that I came across that taught me how to rest in God. And there's a lot of, you know, talk about that in Christian circles, like, oh, resting in God and all that. Um, be still and know that I am God. But until centering prayer, I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know how to be still and know that God is God. I didn't know how to rest in God. And by resting in God, we can allow for that transformational work to, to take place in us. It's not something we do. There's a lot of good things we can do. There's a lot of good prayers we can pray. There's a lot of good intercession we can do. There's a lot of, obviously, good works we can do in the world. But this is about letting something be done to us. And so I think it keeps us in check in our active life um, to live from a, a, a purer place of, of Holy Spirit kinds of motivations that that really bring forth life.